What's happening in YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day. Why? Because we're talking plants, that's why. All right. I know it's been many weeks since I've uh, posted a video, and that is because since I got my cast off, uh, I have been out in nature with my son, Alex, uh, doing a lot of exploring and checking out all the different types of native uh, aquatic plants that grow, amongst other kinds. Uh, and I needed to acquire some of these plants, and I wanted to be able to show the before and after. So some of these plants that I have done, yeah, just like if you get it you know, from a nursery, plant melts all the way and then grows back a new one. And I needed to wait for, uh, for that, and that took quite some time, and I've got several uh, videos. So first, I want to thank all of the new subscribers. Normally I do a shout out to all of the new subscribers. There were 70 in the last three weeks. If I do a shout out to you all, this will just be a shout out video. But I appreciate you all, especially anyone who drops in and says hi or asks questions. Hey, I love that. I get someone to communicate to, and even if you don't have a question, if you just want to drop in and say hi to me or Alex, hey, we love it. Uh, gives us something extra to do with our hobby, chit chat with other people that are in the hobby. So today, this is this video is going to be a journey about how I came across some wild broadleaf arrowhead plant, and it sent me down this journey to where I discovered what type of plant Sagittarius because as it turns out there are 13 different types of arrowheads and they're all Sagittaria. Um, you you may commonly uh, hear of Sagittaria called Sagittaria subulata. Its nickname is the all-leaved arrowhead. So yes and good news it grows it is the most common aquatic plant and grows all over the United States. All right, and I'm going to show pictures of what it looks like when it grows completely submerged and then what Sagittaria looks like when it breaks the surface because they do start growing little arrow shapes and they look completely different. Uh, you know, and I found all this out one day wandering through the woods and finding a random uprooted loose arrowhead plant and I have videos for all of this stuff and uh, I want to put a disclaimer in here. I am... Anytime I go and I, I gather a plant out from the wild, I'm not, you know, digging stuff up. I find if it's an aquatic plant, um, I, I get the ones that were uprooted and washed ashore. They're going to die anyway, so they have a chance when I bring them home and I'm trying to figure out how this plant works. Well, in the past month, I've become an expert on uh, several different types of mosses I'm excited about. I have a video for that and uh, the broadleaf um Arrowhead, which is an invasive species. Um, it's in Florida and it's all over the United States. And I found quite a few. Um, I Googled a lot of stuff where there's people ranting about how they hate invasive species. We can't escape invasive uh, plant species. It's just not possible. It happens naturally. So some of the quotes that I'm going to put up that I show you of uh, uh, science and nature people being like we need to eradicate this plant it is impossible okay invasive uh, plants happen on their own naturally and we can't defeat nature they happen several different ways the wind yeah the wind can literally blow their seeds all the way over the ocean and onto other continents it can happen that way birds do it they eat the seeds fly streets three states over take a dump there it is it starts growing one there Seeds also stick to the animals, foraging through the rivers and the wilderness, and they wander somewhere else, and it drops off, and it grows there. And yes, us humans do it as well, unbeknownst to us, the same way. You travel, you know, to a, a different part of the country, and you're walking through some brush, and it sticks to your sock, and you come home, falls off your sock and onto the ground, and it happens that way. It's the majority of the time it happens naturally. It's not from irresponsible people trying to smuggle plants in from overseas or you know they get a plant they decide they don't like and they just toss it in a lake and now there's uncontrollable amounts of hornwort um, it, it, it all happens naturally uh, so uh, I was uh, nature friendly and so join me on these videos because uh, each one I'm showing 
when I first find it and not quite sure what it is to discovering what it uh, what it actually is and and how you can find it uh, on your own. Um, it grows everywhere. There are some states in America that have their own specific type of Sagittaria that grows only in that state that looks unique to that state. Uh, and I did want to put a list of every single type of Sagittaria in every state across the United States. It's it's just too much. Just trust me. Doesn't matter where you live, you'll find some. It's the most common plant, and uh, it's free. You find it growing in some random stream out in the middle of the woods, you know. So uh, think smart. Don't go stealing it off someone's property unless they tell you it's okay, you know. But um, so let's get to it. And at the end of this video, a full month has passed. I want to show you what the couple of uh, broadleaf uh, Sagittaria. Um, arrowheads look like when I got them and how they look now because they are explosive. The ones that I found that were like nearly dead, they're just, they are awesome. Okay, so uh, let's uh, cut to the videos on uh, this journey and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I'm in the woods at a local stream by my house and I'm out here with my dog, Myers. Myers. And I think I just happened upon some kind of arrowhead vine or ivy or something just randomly growing out here. Um, I don't even know if it's native to here. I'm going to have to check, check that out. But anyway, <sighs> here's one completely loose. It's got some nice solid white white roots. It's got to be an arrowhead plant. I'm going to take this home. I'm going to check this out and see what's going on with this. All right. Well, all right. I'm back at the house. And you know what? That what I thought was uh, arrowhead uh, that we took a, I took a video of and I brought some of it home. I started doing some digging pretty simple uh, I just pulled up the map of all the local uh, native plants in Minnesota and one of them happens to be broadleaf arrowhead and I knew I had recognized it because I made a video six months ago my wife had bought one a potted one and I had the bright idea of just digging my scissors in there to snip some out and accidentally snipped off all the roots. Uh, I don't. I should have pulled it out and looked at what I was doing. But anyway, I kill. I, I killed it like instantly. I'm gonna put the video down there. My wife had spent like 15 bucks on that plant and I killed it in a single snip. And turns out, it grows in Northeast Minnesota. Uh, and to be clear, it's not native. Uh, w when I was looking it up, I'm gonna put up this. This thing I found on Google, because uh, I, I was putting his arrowhead, broadleaf uh, arrowhead, native to Minnesota. And look at what it says right here. Um, it is not native, it is invasive, and it should be eradicated! You can hear the anger in that, <laughs> in that but uh, they also say that about hornwort too. So, But, anyway, cool. I scored a few stacks of it. There's a plentiful amount, as you saw, because I noticed a whole bunch growing up. I don't know why I never noticed it before. You know why I noticed it this time? Because it's a common house plant, and I killed one. So, but at this time, these grew straight out of the water. They've already got roots converted to that shit. So, uh, what am I going to do with them? Well, if you ever uh, order plants online that are being, you know, grown underwater, they always come in these cups. Or if you, you may uh, be one of the lucky few who live close enough to a aquatic nursery. I don't. Um, but I do know a couple of my subs that do live uh, in riding distance of aquarium co-op. And Anyway, <clears throat> so I keep all my cups for this reason. Sometimes I like to dilly-dally with some of the wild plants to see what's going on. Uh, and i got lots. Uh, doing a moss video, too. So I found like eight different types of terrestrial moss. That'll be on another time. So put the rock wool in here, stick them in. I'm just going to uh, 
stick them in one of my filters. I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. And then I'll figure out what to do with them from there. So, but yeah. Oh, look, Alex is here. Hey, Alex, did you go to the uh, river and help me collect this arrowhead vine plant? Yeah. Oh, you didn't? Oh, yeah. I guess that's why you weren't there. Yeah. Oh. So that would also explain why I collected all of it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, bro. Yeah. All right. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. <laughs> all right. Uno momento, por favor. Let's get these all bagged up and go from there. Why are you coming? He's over there. Anyway, so uh, after I did some more research on this plant, it is definitely the broadleaf arrowhead. Um, it's not native here. Actually, it's native in uh, Florida. Uh, I found a lot of it. Uh, there's a dwarf size and a large size, which are several feet. And I'm pretty sure these will be the large type. Um, and since they wanted eradicated so badly, I don't mind if I oblige. Uh, if you'd like to know what the reason is why uh, invasive plants are disliked is because they are responsible for 42% of uh, endangered and uh, threatened species of plants by competing for light, space, nutrients, and moisture. Um, this plant in particular is also called the duck potato. Um, you can eat the bulb if you boil it or uh, sear it, apparently. Um, I mean, I'll take their word for it. I'm not going to pull any out and eat it. But I do think it's awesome uh, to look at. And actually, the fact that I bumped into some in Minnesota is actually quite odd. Um, apparently, it's extremely difficult for it to live in environments that go into deep freezes like this. That Their bulbs surviving throughout the winter is uh, not common at all. But I think this plant looks great. And... I want to get a few going at the house and just just check out man these flowers look awesome on here anyway uh as it turns out it is not the same exact arrowhead plant uh, that my wife had that i had destroyed um these get massive but they can grow submerged and immersed and uh i want to check out a few of these bulbs and see what we got going on here so see you back at the well in the dungeon basement under the stairs so real quick, I just want to show you kind of the cleanup of a, um, you know, wild plant that you grab. If it's been underwater, if you look down here towards the edges, there's clumps of dirt. And even here at the base. So there's a few things we want to do. First, we want to, we want to separate all of the good-looking white roots from the ones that are thin and brown. Those are already on their way out the door. And that white, vibrant, and kind of firm to the touch, they're already on their way out. So trim that up. Find a root that, like this one right here, has a crinkle. It's almost broke all the way through. It's just time for it to go. You'll be cutting off a lot, but I promise you the plant will do okay. Uh, especially if you pull it out and it has white roots at all, it has converted to its underwater growth. Any clumps of dirt that I can't get out, I'll just snip that off too. And we want to leave some as clean and all the clean and healthy roots that we can. Alright, and then like there are some broken leaves near the base. To get the dirt out of those because I'm going to be rinsing these off in a bucket of clean water. See, now that I exposed it, so I just need to run it vigorously uh, through a bucket of water and it'll get those clumps of dirt out. Um, your wild plants are going to be covered in beneficial bacteria. They'll also have critters. Now, don't be scared of critters, okay? Uh, that's not what we're doing here. We're not trying to stop wild you know freshwater scuds and fleas from getting in there because that's free food for your for your animals uh they also serve a purpose beneficial ones so don't be scared of nature happening in your tank it's going to happen regardless whether you order your plants from a nursery or buy your fish from a huge chain store there's always hitchhikers hitchhiking on a fish or hitchhiking on a shrimp or hitchhiking on a plant it's just the way of things
You know, so you can't hide from you can't hide from nature forever. Now I've got I have uh, trimmed the roots. I've still got a nuggy of dirt in there. And I've got a bucket of clean water. I put it in there, and I'll go through the cleaning process on the next. All right, and so on and so forth. So there we go. All right, so here is my current. This is my uh, essentially a biotope, my nature scape. Almost every plant in here now uh, are uh, wild plants that I've uh, brought and put in to this tank. So. Um, as you can see here, this is one of the arrow plants, and no, it wasn't big like this when I got it. It was a teeny tiny little thing, and I snipped off all the dead stuff, but I wanted to leave one to show you that just like out in the wild, they do go through a melting process when they're moved. So this was like two that were melting. I'm going to snip those off. But this bright green stuff that's made it to the surface, that is my broadleaf Sagittaria, or uh, arrowhead if you'd like to call it. Um, there's some growing in the back there too and here and I'm going to show what it looks like on the surface now right here is a wild plant that you can find anywhere this is called muck grass it looks a lot like Vallisneria with little tiny streamers that come off of it all the way up to the top um, that is a seasonal plant it doesn't last very long but every year I do find myself grabbing a few to put in there uh, the Vallisneria is local uh, Vallisneria that I have been growing that you will see in the back here. Hornwort. Um, and I want to remind everyone, when you collect uh, wild plants, don't be scared, you know, of nature. I did say this before, you know, you don't need to treat your plants and do this crazy absurd stuff, soaking it in bleach for 10 minutes I've heard of and using like massive amounts of potassium chloride don't do that to your plant there there is no reason to do it and to be scared because it might have a snail on there snails are an important part of a planted aquarium they are a cleanup crew just like your plants are your cleanup crew you end up with a couple of scuds or dirt fleas in your tank that's free food for your plants but they also serve a purpose outside of being free food a lot of them reside in your soil and what they do in dirt is they are continually rotating your dirt. So they bring the fresh mulm, which would be mulm as your fish waste or dead plants. They rotate it down to the bottom of the tank. So everything's moving in circle and getting recycled right back into your plants. Algae, as you can see, I have a little bit of hair algae on there. Algae is not a bad thing in your tank. I, I know it can be unsightly if it gets out of control. But um, in general, leave your algae. It is food for your animals, um, and it does provide a lot of uh, extra uh, oxygen as well. And it is uh, a part of the cleaning uh, process in your whole tank, you know, because that's what we're aiming for. And yeah, I know this tank looks um, dirty, but well, because it's got real dirt in it and uh, real wild plants growing in there uh, so yeah it's going to look a little bit like nature it's not going to be like those crisp clean aquascapes you see on youtube where people are using co2 those tanks they build them in one day do a video shoot and then it all gets torn apart they don't show what it looks like a year later because things change over over time you know so um, these right here this is uh, all uh, cryptocorns also I haven't, cryptocorns are not native here. I have heard of some people finding some randomly um, in the United States, um, but I, I never have. Uh, so let's see what else do I have in here that I can uh, show off. But, oh, the above. So let me show you um, what the broad leaf looks like when it reaches the surface. It floats at the top, makes these awesome arrows that are growing. That one that was melting, it was melting because it was growing um, immersed out in the wild. So naturally, since I've sunk it underwater, it's going to melt all the way back down and grow a new green vibrant one just like this and like that. And I've got some back here. And mind you, this stuff grew like crazy. I only had two of them, and they started 
uh, sending out shoots under the dirt and spawning new ones right next to it. So I've got some back here growing. And uh, of course I clipped off a little bit more of my, I know I say it wrong, but I just like saying it, pothos. I don't like pothos. That seems weird. But look at the roots. Adapting to it quickly, I'm just letting it float. You know, I'll let it just grow all the way across the top here. Um, the floaters, I did not get out in the wild. I got this water lettuce a long time ago doing a uh, aquascape video shoot a couple years ago. My son and I did on TV. I got to keep one water lettuce, and it became enough to just... Every tank just has water lettuce. And this isn't... I pull them out when they get around this size. Water lettuce is actually a pond plant, and they can get larger than your hand. So if you leave them be for long enough, yeah, you'll have this giant hand-sized floater on there. But just look, I, I love the way that this Sagittaria arrowhead looks. I find one random plant, and I find out it's the most common, and it just happens to look a lot different in the wild than what you would see at your local fish store. And I'll, I, I, and I'll be throwing up pictures that show what it looks like when it's growing fully submerged. They have these kind of spoon-shaped, broad leaves, um, you know, but when they make, make it to the surface, hey, they got arrows and little white flowers. Yes, your dwarf Sagittaria also does grow little white flowers. So, um, just looks great. I love it. Oh, fish. Uh, the red one, Sarpe Tetris. I've had these for years. The same school of eight. Not a single one has died. And my uh, ghost uh, Tetris or albino. Albino glow light Tetras. Uh, the orange ones are glow light Tetras. Um, and then have a few zebra danios in here. And they are one big happy family. And I do check the water on occasion. But they're, the plant load in here is so high, it keeps up with these guys' waste. Um, and as far as wild critters, the worst wild critter I have ever found uh, was a leech. And it didn't make it that long. I saw it sticking out of the dirt, and I reached in there and I pulled it out all the way, and I was like, oh, that's a leech. Man, these Sarpe Tetras attacked it like a school of piranha. Uh, they tore it to bits. So even the scary stuff, even Hydra, if you know what Hydra is, everyone's scared of Hydra because, you know, it eats, um, well, it eats invertebrates. Uh, so it's a problem with shrimp. But in here, you see Hydra, or uh, you find yourself. Some of those, um, what do we call them, the arrowhead worms, the, uh, you know what I'm talking about, uh, I, I can't think of their name right now, the worms that everyone hates with the arrowheads, they eat that stuff too, so um, not, not much wildlife you got to worry about when it comes to the aquatic world, and this one, I love this tank, this tank is over two years old, um, and some of the plants are the same plants, but you know, these, the majority of your aquatic plants are perennial, so a lot of them have uh, died and stuff has come back, and I've added things to it, and I am I will be sad when my arrowhead, my broadleaf arrowheads are out of season and they die back over the winter, but I'll be excited next year, and here's a little baby one coming back, see I'm getting up, oh, I've already been talking for eight minutes, all right, I better end this. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you. And like always, if you're down in the dumps, you're having a hard time, get up and do something about it. We'll catch you next time. Hit that like and subscribe.